Okay, welcome to our Vedico lecture and discussion series in digital interculturality. Today we started with a song by Fabrizio De André, which was chosen by Klaus Herhardt, who's the professor who will hold the lecture today. So just to give you a uh, the context of what is happening today, above all for the new people. Uh, the lecture is organized by Redico, which is a project funded by the German Ministry of uh, Research and, and, um, uh, and Education. Um, you should follow us on Twitter so that you can, or X now, uh, so that you can uh, always be updated and otherwise look our, always to our website. There are some news coming up in the new year. So uh, today is already the starting of the second part of this series. Um, and the topic, as you know, is politeness, politeness in digital communication. It's um, ne next time and also in the past, we spoke a lot about lack the lack of politeness yeah we spoke about um hate speech for example and we will also speak again about this kind of negative topics and today we have a wonderful um break <laughs> uh and klaus herd uh, will give us some new insights on how it is to be polite online which in intercultural context is quite challenging so Klaus, who is he? Klaus, uh, I got to know Klaus and so Ferga did because of um, where we are working in at the University of Vienna, the Department of Intercultural Communication and Business Communication. And um, there, the, this department where we work, Ferga and I, was funded by Jürgen Bolton. Many of you know him already, probably, and uh, the other ones should get um, to know him um unfortunately not personally anymore <laughs> he's with us just with his spirit i guess uh, at the moment uh, but uh, for sure he left very many uh, great texts great ideas which inspired us uh, inspired many people and i hope they will inspire you too so klaus uh, was studying with him uh, with jürgen bolton in dusseldorf and they uh, remained in good contact so that we also can take advantage of this relationship. Klaus studied in Dusseldorf philosophy and German uh, linguistic. Uh, and he is professor for, had been professor for 30 years uh, by now at the University of Urbino in, Itali in Italy. Uh, and there he is a professor for intercultural communication and German um, and German. Um, one of his uh, many research interests are obviously politeness. So Klaus, if you want to uh, add something more about yourself, uh, you are free to do it. And otherwise you're free to share your screen and, uh, and start with your presentation. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for this introduction. I think it's, uh, it's enough to, to start. Um, um, I'm very happy to be here today in this virtual space with uh, students from different countries, from different universities. It is a, a great opportunity to, to speak to you, even if it would be obviously much better to see each other um, in uh, personally. But okay, I, it is uh, at, at least uh, we can uh, organize a lesson um, in this way. Um, I appreciate very much to be uh, to be here with you. Um, I must apologize for my English at the beginning, especially with all the native speakers of English. I, as Luisa told you, I am a professor for German language and in Italy, so I usually uh, speak in my lessons in Italian or in German. Uh, so I'm not so very so. I'm not a professor of English or language, so I'm not trained to to help lessons in in English. But I hope it will not be too much of a torture for, especially for all the native speakers of English. 
Well, um, I will uh, present to you something about uh, politeness in digital, in di digital communication and in intercultural communication. As uh, Luisa anticipated, we will not speak about aggression, about hate speech or something like that, um, which is the first uh, topic that comes into the into mind of, of everyone who hears about politeness in intercultural in, in digital communication so when i when i speak about this the first thing people uh, ask me ah is there any politeness in it in digital communication and there is so much about impolite uh, communication about hate speech uh, and, and things like this um but it, this is not my topic today i um I wonder in, in this lecture. I'm in fact I'm quite excited about this because I didn't I'd never think about this or speak about this before. Uh, the question I will address here is more um, in this direction: is is what we what we lose when we communicate online, when we communicate in um, digital settings, um, and um, what what is what what's the the difference uh, between digital and non-digital uh, communication. So um, this will be the main question. You will, I, I, I will, um, I will, and I, I can share now the screen, and we can start with the communication. I hope you, I hope everybody can see that. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so uh, I I want to give you first a, a brief introduction about teaching and learning in intercultural settings. Um, this is okay, um, and then turn to politeness, um, to different concepts of politeness. The first one I will show you is something about is a folk theoretic concept of politeness, so an everyday understanding of politeness. Um, I will make some brief remarks about politeness and intercultural communication, um, show you something about pragmatic linguistic approaches to politeness, and then uh, turn to politeness and relationship. And at the end, we will come back to um, digital communication. And I hope that uh, you will help me to, to understand something more about how digital communication can be polite and not aggressive at all. Um, so the I must say that uh, to, about interculture, about digital communication and politeness, I you will notice that I have um, more questions than answers, but I hope that we can uh, give some answers together at the end. So the introduction is a kind of a frame for what I will show you. Um, the frame will be closed at the end. Um, this frame is about... Uh, uh, teaching and uh, learning in intercultural, uh, in di digital uh, in, in rooms, in virtual communication. Um, and I was inspired by, well, I, when I prepared this lecture, I remembered a book uh, I, I read some years ago. I took it again in my hands and it, I, I got very much uh, inspired again by this book. This is a book written by Massimo Recalcati, which is one of the most famous uh, Italian psychoanalysts. Um, he's very famous in Italy. He has um, published a lot of uh, very interesting texts about many topics. And this, this was a book he wrote in 2014 about um, uh, teaching, about learning. Uh, it's called L'ora di lezione per un erotica dell'insegnamento. It's, it's speaking about... Um, on the right side, you see a photo of uh, Massimo Recalcati, and uh, maybe this is an explain. It explains why he is especially. Um, he has many fo followers uh, between and uh, between female Italians, <laughs> because he, I, I never I, I never met him, but he must be a very uh, very nice person as well. So um, this book is about uh, teaching. It has nothing to do with uh, um, relationships between 
uh, teachers and uh, students, but it focuses on the erotics of knowledge. So I will show you um, with the help of two quotations what it is about. Um, it's so you can see here the uh, one part of the book in Italian and uh, and you see the um, the English translation. I well I I, I read directly the the English text. Uh, so he says it, even more radically, it is not this. So he speaks about school and university. Here it's the word is school, but it's also thought for university. Even more radically, it is not. What, is it is it not this what reminds of the school the possibility each time new of transforming the objects of knowledge into objects of desire into erotic bodies it is is this not what the whole game of teaching ultimately consists of should the school not have this as its own task to make knowledge an object capable of moving desire an eroticized object capable of functioning as the cause of desire, capable of moving, drawing towards, setting the learner in motion. So this is very much about um, teaching should be, um, in from his point of view, something that uh, uh, shows us that knowledge is, as I say it in easier words, knowledge is uh, sexy. Knowledge is something interesting and um, Teachers should be able to motivate uh, the, the, the students' desire to know and to, to know um, deeply what they are talking about. And the second quotation I show you is about the role of, of, the, of the teachers in this whole proce process. So... Um, it's a quotation from the beginning of the book, which says, the main thesis of this book is, what remains of the school is the function of the teacher. The function is to open the subject to culture as a place of humanization of life. It is to make possible the encounter with the erotic dimension of knowledge. The real heart of school is made up of class hours that can be adventures, encounters, deep intellectual and emotional experiences. So um, in his idea, teaching is much more than the transport of knowledge from the head of the teacher to the head of the students. It is something which passes uh, through bodies and relations between teachers and students. So this brings me to some uh, initial questions, um, especially the question, how much is this, what he is describing, so adventures, encounters, deep intellectual and emotional experience, how much is it possible in digital lessons? Um, can uh, objects be transformed into erotic bodies when actors are only virtually present? So when we do not meet each other, when we just see each other on the screen, uh, how can we introduce more personal and interactive moments in digital communication? Can we replace or substitute physical pre presents in some way in uh, digital uh, lectures? So um, what I, as I told you, what I want to show you is will not be an answer to these questions, but maybe it uh, hopefully it will be um, some idea that could uh, give us some direction for how to look for answers to this, these questions and to, to questions about digital communication in general. So um, what I want to show you is something about politeness, but politeness as an example of how communication in traditional contexts works, so not online, not in, in digital communication. Um, and it will um, show. Uh, it, I will show you uh, that uh, politeness can be understood uh, very much as relationship management. So, uh, one of the questions will be: What is politeness? How important is politeness for communication and interaction? And how does it work? So we will see what is missing when we talk um, in digital uh, rooms. So the, the question for the beginning is this one. There are many different concepts, many different ideas of politeness. Um, this is a quotation from one of the 
in my opinion, best books about uh, politeness, about pragmatics of politeness, which says, it's written by Geoffrey Leach, it says, according to one view, politeness is a superficial and dispensable adornment of human language, rather than icing the cake. For others, it is a deeper phenomenon, something that human communication would find it hard to do without. So the difference is between looking at uh, politeness as something which we can use in our interaction, in our communication, which makes it uh, nicer, more beautiful, uh, more interesting, um, but we can also do without. And the other idea is, uh, the second idea, which I signed in red here, is um, politeness is deeply rooted in the possibility of communication. So we cannot communicate without being polite, without doing something which we can describe as politeness. Um, it will not um, be a big surprise for you if I say that uh, I will um, argue for the second approach. So I will show you something about a pragmatic approach to politeness, which uh, uh, includes that politeness is uh, actually uh, an important element of every form of communication. But obviously, the first uh, thought, so uh, that uh, the, the idea that politeness is something we can also do without, um, is not wrong, or it is not useless. And uh, it is what uh, normally people think about politeness. It is uh, um, somehow the uh, the basic idea of what what I call the folk theoretic uh, theory or the folk theoretic concept of politeness, and I will show you something more about this at the beginning. So first of all, politeness is a phenomenon which is uh, present at least as a uh, metalinguistic term in uh, all languages. So it seems to be important in all in all the languages in all the cultures. Um, here you have some examples of words um, uh, that refer to politeness in other languages. In many languages, um, the origin of the word that talks about that talks about politeness is uh, something that has to do with courts. So uh, in, in English it is not, but in English you have as well courtesy, uh, where the court is uh, one part of the of the of the term. Um, so politeness is linked somehow to what was the behavior on courts in in former uh, periods. Um, the other um, term uh, which is used in some languages is politeness. It has to do with uh, polite, with polire, uh, with with uh, the, the, English, the Italian word polire means to clean. So also the uh, Latin um, origin means to clean. So it is something about uh, cleaning the behavior in um and make it, making it more pure uh, making yeah well more pure and maybe uh, less honest so as i mentioned before uh, politeness has also a very long tradition in um in the reflections about human behavior um when we uh, when we when I walk out here in Urbino and go to the main square and or in Germany or somewhere else and ask someone, what do you think is politeness? Um, the answer probably will be something like um, politeness means to behave uh, in a appropriate way in certain moments, uh, to say hello to other persons, to uh, shake hands when you meet someone. Um, to eat in a certain way when you when you eat with uh, with other persons, maybe also if you when you eat alone. Um, so to do what uh, the men or books or etiquette uh, uh, tells you to do. Here we have some. Uh, I could not show you uh, um, interviews with persons in the uh, main court in Urbino. We have some uh, quotations from um, more or less important and more or less. Uh, uh, intellectual persons who say who maybe reflect what uh, normal persons think about politeness. You have, for instance, in number five, by the famous intellectual and professor Bono, 
um, who is talking about politeness is a wonderful thing. Manners. So he he says uh, uh, explicitly that politeness is something that has to do with manners, and he notes that uh, Jesus did not have manners. So it seems to be uh, something which uh, it is not so important for our communication. And you see in number six. Uh, uh, by the quotation in the quotation by Paul Valéry that um, there there is a, in many persons also some kind of um, suspect uh, to uh, to politeness. Politeness is organized indifference. So that means, and I think that this is a quite representative idea that when we are polite, um, we do not really give um, importance to other persons. But we just do it on a formal way without uh, believing what we are doing, without doing it uh, honestly. So politeness has always also this idea that uh, it is a kind of a, of a lie. Um, but in general, um, politeness is very much, uh, at least in this uh, folk theoretic uh, concept, is very much um, um, seen as the uh, presentation, the realization of what is uh, good manners. When we see the word politeness, how we use the word politeness, maybe we can understand something more about what it is. Here you have, here you see it is, I, I looked in the British, uh, the, the, what was this one, in the uh, British National Corpus, I was looking for words used uh, together with politeness. So it's a uh, co-occurrences of politeness. Um, and here you see uh, the ad adjective polite uh, is used very much with these uh, substantive, with these nouns you, you can see. And, and that shows us a little bit what or who can be polite. You can see that uh, polite is uh, used with uh, many nouns that refer to speech events like conversation, a request, language, words, tone, letters. So we are verbally polite, which we can speak in a polite way when we have conversation or when we realize a certain speech act such as requests. Um, there are also um, events of nonverbal behavior like smile, applause, attention, which may be polite, or which may be performed in a polite way. And we have uh, human beings like people, person, society as a group of uh, human uh, persons and man. So also uh, persons can be polite. It's uh, maybe it's, it's kind of a, a part of their character of their main characteristics. Um, but in general, um, um, you can see, uh, we, we don't have to comment on this, but just to show you, in general, um, politeness is very much uh, good manners. And there are many um, books or uh, internet uh, or, or homepage or offers on internet that tell us what we can do to be, in order to be polite, uh, to to say hello, to 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 make small talk, to use please and thank you and similar words. So these are um, kind of advices what to do when we uh, when we are uh, polite. So you see at the end also good table manners make part of uh, these advices. Um, it is kind of a do's and don'ts uh, what we can what, what we have to do in order to be polite obviously from a scientific point of view this is not enough this is not this not does not explain anything about politeness in communication it's just a, a list of rules or of prescriptive indi indications um Obviously, this is also important in intercultural communication. I'm, and there are also many um, books or other publications that show us what to do in order to be polite in intercultural communication. I show you one short example. It's about four minutes um, in, about uh, German politeness. It is, uh, oh yeah, you can see that. 
Being polite is a really important part of working and living in Germany if you want to connect with your colleagues, clients, or neighbors smoothly. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you the three ways that you can use to make polite conversation in German. If you are enjoying my videos and learning German, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss a lesson with me. Also, follow me on Instagram at SpeakFluentGerman, where I post daily quizzes, useful phrases in German, and more to help you navigate life in Germany, Switzerland, and Austria with ease and confidence. And if you want to hear about how you can study with me online with my online course, the link is in the description box below. So the first thing that you need to know is that in German, there are two types of U forms, the formal U and the informal U. We address someone formally with Z and informally with Du. Du is used for friends, family members, and children. Z is used for someone you haven't met, someone older than you, or simply in formal situations like speaking to your boss, speaking in a job interview, or a client meeting. Addressing someone with Z is seen as being polite. So when we use Z in a sentence, the verb is always conjugated with an E-N at the end. Conjugating simply means changing the verb according to the person and the tense of the sentence. Let's take sprechen as an example. Sprechen means to speak. So for the first person singular, I, I speak, I would say ich spreche in German. For the informal you, the second person singular would be du sprichst and so on. But when we use the formal you, the ending simply remains en. So if I want to say, do you speak English? I'd say Sprechen Sie Englisch. The second thing that you need to know about being polite in German is when we address someone formally, it's also important to address them with Herr oder Frau, Mr. or Mrs. and Miss, plus their last name. In a lot of international companies, it's becoming more and more common to address colleagues with their first names, but then still use Sie. So if you are just starting in a new work environment and you're not sure how to address someone, I always recommend to use Herr or Frau plus the last name to be on the safe side. For example, you can greet your boss or colleague with Guten Morgen, Frau Müller, or Guten Tag, Herr Schmidt. And the last important tip for sounding more polite in German is using the subjunctive, more specifically the subjunctive to, or in German, Konjunktiv 2. The Konjunktiv 2 is a verb form that expresses imaginary situations, dreams, suggestions, and recommendations. It is often used in order to sound more polite. So for example, instead of saying, haben Sie morgen Zeit, do you have time tomorrow? You can say, hätten Sie morgen Zeit? Would you have time tomorrow? Or another example, instead of saying, können Sie mir eine E-Mail schicken? Can you send me an email? You can use the Konjunktiv 2 and say, könnten Sie mir eine E-Mail schicken? I hope that was helpful. If you have more topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. So, this charming young lady <laughs> showed us something about German language. If you're not native speakers of German, you could learn something about German here. But um, mostly she, um, she focused on the fact that uh, Politeness actually is um, an issue for uh, intercultural communication. It is it is kind of difficult to realize when you are not familiar with the culture of the persons you you speak with, and therefore, when you look at uh, handbooks of intercultural communication, you will easily find many chapters which explicitly or implicitly refer also to politeness um, and uh, you, you, you can find many examples about um, the organization of time which might might be more or less polite and uh, many things like this the use of titles the, the use of names and um, what, what she was speaking about was uh, one central point uh, which is 
I think uh, interculturally very important, but also um, very difficult to find the right form of address to persons. So she she talked about the two uh, German forms uh, to address persons U and Z, the formal and the, inf the informal form. Um, she talked about another uh, topic which is important, the, the use of titles, uh, names and titles. And it was in, in, in this case, it was Herr e Frau and about uh, grammar structures used to express politeness, which might be in German, the subjunctive or the conjunctive, as we say in, in German. Um, I think you can easily, you will easily agree with me that this was nice. It was uh, interesting. And, uh, but I wonder really if it, it is useful when you have to speak with uh, German persons. So, because the distinction, for instance, between do and see between the two um, forms of address is not as easy as she puts it. So, because in the real communication, you you it, this this will not help you. It just helps you to know that there are two modes of uh, two forms of address. But normally, you speak with real persons, and you have to you don't not, you don't always really know if you know them well, if you are friends with them, if you are more or less on the same level. Um, what they think of you and in normal conversation um, and that's that makes it uh, interesting and difficult we do not uh, speak with uh, persons that can be classified so easily as she puts it so I, I it. for instance when someone is older than you you have to say see not always you have to say see and she also told us that z is the more polite form it is also, this is when you look at it closely, it is wrong because it's not the polite form. When when you when you address your friends with a C, uh, with a with a formal um, way of addressing persons, it, it is uh, not polite. So, it is polite to use the correct form, the adequate form, the appropriate form in in uh, in the situation, but it is not polite to use this form or another form. And we can say. Uh, the same about all the other topics, uh, about titles and names, about uh, how to say thank you or please and uh, to apologize and things like this. So uh, politeness is much more complex um, than just uh, what what we can what we can see when we just look at this kind of rules and this kind of uh, um, manner uh, indications. Um, when we look at politeness from a, and this is the next thing I would want to show you, in, from a scientific or a pragmatic point of view, we have to um, go very much deeper into what really happens in communication, what we see when we communicate with other persons, what we do when we communicate with other persons, and why we do this. So I have here one photo, one picture that shows you a moment, uh, very banal and uh, not not interesting and not very special moment in uh, a train station in Italy uh, where you can see three persons that uh, that form a group. So they are there together. And what they do, obviously, we can immediately recognize this, that uh, what they are doing is not just staying there one close to the to the other uh, but they are interacting they are doing something together they are in a certain sense a group which is has its limits um, um, which is um, different from all the other persons uh, in in the station and which forms a communicative unit inside the whole situation we can recognize it because we can see that they look at each other, that they have a, a certain posture, they are, um, they, um, they, they form um, with their bodies uh, a group and they, they, they smile and you, you see they're, they're doing things, to, uh, things and they are doing things together. One can easily recognize this on, on, this, uh, on this picture. Um, when we come to another example, I would I would like to show you some photos. These are four photos of persons who 
do something which is also very much connected to politeness they greet each other and what we can see here is a very famous photo of the former president of the united states obama who is greeting the um, emperor the, the former emperor of uh, japan when he came to to japan to an official visit this photo has very has been very much criticized in, in the united states because um Many persons commented that uh, what Obama does here is not uh, it's not an adequate ad adequate and not appropriate way of uh, uh, greeting the highest representative of a culture of a country which has been um, on the other side uh, in the second in Second World War, which has been uh, defeated by by the Americans in the Second World War, and which. Uh, uh, still can be uh, uh, understood as the, the former um, the other party in in war so so what uh, what they what commenters see in this uh, gesture of obama is that he uh, bows very deeply and he shakes hands so it, it is a mixture of a uh, american and uh, Japanese ways of greeting, but uh, he somehow um, adequates his behavior to to the to what Japanese persons would expect from him, and uh, especially right wing pol politicians in the United States said this is not what uh, what a president of the United States should do. So, what sh what this shows us to a, what, so a very similar photo is the next one, which is the. Uh, German uh, Minister of Economics speaking to the um, the head of the state of Qatar because he when he went there and he also bows his body very deeply for for Germans and shows something which uh, Germans in this case did not appreciate very much um, because. Um, also because there is behind this there is a whole story about Qatar about the uh, political about the conditions of human rights in Qatar and it was very co much connected with the uh, football world championship in Qatar and so on but anyway um, also here persons saw not just a way of greeting but a way of greeting that expresses a lot of things that we can we can uh, see what we can feel in this moment and which uh, some pre at least some persons did not like um some other exp so when you see this it's a former president of uh, france with the former chancellor of germany when you see this it's also a kind of uh, a greeting and here as well we see a kind of greeting which uh, shows i think more than just uh, respect uh, between the two countries but it, it shows also something um, like uh, a personal uh, a pre a, that it shows that Chirac uh, appreciates also personal personally the German Chancellor not only as a representative representative of another country and the last one is this one where you can see um, I think you can easily recognize who is the chief and who is uh, who is the 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 soldier? So it's a high soldier, it's a general greeting the former um, German minister of defense, and you see also in the way he, he greets the, the 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 head is bowed, and so he's looking at her in a certain way. Um, in 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 the way of greeting, we can recognize there's a hierarchical um, distance between the persons. So to summarize that. Um, when we do actions, uh, verbal and non-verbal actions like greeting someone, we have different layers of message. So, greeting is the first message of uh, of the of a greeting is just recognizing the other. So, the first message is I see you, I realize you. And the second layer of a message is I accept you as a partner for interaction. So we are we are ready to enter into something which is a together like the group in the station. So we with the grease with the greeting, we give the signal that from now on we are or we can uh, do something together. And 
The third layer is uh, the layer um, which I would call the relationship layer because the way we greet others um, gives information about what we think about the other persons and what we think about our position respect to the other person. So it might be something like, I think you are a friend, you are a respected person, you are superior, you're my chief or something like this. Um, the fourth layer is that we greet other persons um, not only in a certain way, not only because we have the, a certain op opinion about the relationship with the other person, but also we try to anticipate what the other person would think about uh, our relationship. So what the layer, uh, the fourth layer of message would say is something like, I think that you think that we are friends, that uh, I am your superior, I'm your chief, or something like that. So every um, um, speech act, verbal or nonverbal uh, communicative act transmits uh, messages on different layers. Um, one of the layers is just information. Um, and here we have uh, also, no, and, and this is uh, right, quite normal in conversation, in communication, um, there is also this relational level. I could um, summarize this, showing you something which is quite uh, known about um, possible functions of communication and possible contents of communication. This picture shows something about what we do when we uh, communicate. Uh, so I'm looking for uh, when we communicate, okay, so um, on different levels. So the, the, the important part is this one uh, below. So there are, and you, you can find things like this in very old uh, works by Roman Jakobson, by Karl Bühler and others. Um, it just shows that communication is much more than an exchange of uh, messages uh, and an exchange of uh, information. There is information. This is you know, when we speak about, when you speak with other persons, we speak about something. So when Obama speaks with the uh, Japanese emperor, he speaks about the relationships between states, about um, common projects and so on. This is the representation level. There's uh, the, also the persuasion level because we, want to want the other to to do something to think something to wish something or something else so we want to have an impact on the behavior or the beliefs of the other person this is together the so-called informative level of communication which is in our context more important is the social level of communication that means that when we speak to other persons we always have a uh, one part of a one component of the message is a social message, which has two aspects, the image and the relation. The image means that we say something, we reveal something about ourselves. So we give information about our persons. And the most important one in our context here is the relational level. We um, engage in a relation with other persons and we shape this relation in a certain way um, as we have seen for example um, with the greetings so the greetings gives us first informations about how the interaction should or could um, continue and in which atmosphere in which relation we we feel to be um, to uh, to to the other persons. Um, this relational level is so we, we can also. I I would not uh, go deeper into this. Um, what my claim is that uh, everything that has to do with the relational level can be summarized summarized as politeness. So when we give information uh, on the relational level. We try to be polite. We try to show what the relationship is like to the others is like in our opinion. Um, and if we show what the relationship 
is like, in our opinion, we behave in a, a way that in our, from our point of view, is appropriate to this kind of relationship. And this means, in my opinion, and this is a, a, a pragmatic uh, opinion about uh, politeness, we, uh, we are being polite. So we do what we um, intend uh, in a polite way. So politeness is in this, from this point of view, um, a necessary and always present aspect of every form of communication. It might be in some interactions more or less important. For instance, uh, in uh, um, in, uh, in uh, also in, in certain moments, it is might be more or less important. It is very important at the beginning uh, of an interaction with the greetings. It is obviously very important in interactions um, uh, like uh, every uh, all all the public interactions try to construct a relationship with a with a with a target group. And here, um, politeness or res um, relational communication is quite important because without it, it does not the communication does not work. So. Um, so I would identify politeness with uh, relationship management. Um, this is a general um, definition of, of politeness from my point of view that says that politeness is, from this point of view, not uh, using the adequate, the appropriate form of uh, language, but it is um, going into a relationship um, constructing a relationship and maintaining a relationship on a certain level so all the activities we do just to stay together with the others and to shape this relationship in an appropriate way so politeness means from this point of view um, trying to get a balance between what i think about the relationship to the others and what i think the others will uh, will think about the relationship between us and the relationship which is important, which is relevant for this kind of interaction. So relationship, um, and now I come to one, one last quotation. This is a quotation from uh, Ring Goffman, um, um, sociologist of, uh, who wrote many interesting and important texts about interaction. Um, and in this text, um, which is called Thai Science, I, I think he um, he's speaking about a very important uh, point when it comes to politeness and relationship management. So I briefly read this. When persons, there, there to four, unacquainted, come into each other's immediate presence, so like in the group in, in that station, the fact that their relationship is anonymous or at, at best has just begun not to be is made evident for them and others by means of many signs. Similarly, when those with an anchored relationship in that anchored relation come into unobstructed range of affecting social context, the fact that theirs, their relation, is not anonymous this is not an anonymous relation is made evident indeed in both cases the participants are under subtle obligation to treat each other uh, in such a manner that these bits of intelligence incidentally become available all such evidence about relationships that is about ties between persons whether involving objects, acts, expressions, or only excluding the literal aspects of ex explicit documentary statements, I shall call Thai signs. So Thai signs, I think all the, all the signs we use in conversation to um, show something about our idea of the of the relationship. Um, are, as uh, Goffman puts it here, uh, obligations. So we have to do that to be in a relationship with others, to be in a, uh, let's say, a good working conversation with others. So I am, 
there are different kinds of tie signs. When we come back to our uh, example of the digital and traditional lessons, when we speak about this uh, ties, I, I, I don't know if you can imagine which kind of tie signs we normally use or we can use when we are in a classroom in university or school. Um, and what is the difference between the, the classroom in school and the digital room we are in right now? Um, there are many tie signs we cannot realize here in this uh, virtual environment. Um, for instance, um, I cannot see if uh, someone of you is uh, smiling which is i think a very uh, or you can you can hardly see if i am smiling so which is um um i think a very important sign in the interaction in um, real in non digital um surroundings we cannot laugh together here we can we cannot show emotions together we cannot comment on emotions that are present in a certain situation but normally in classrooms we do that so i i can see emotions uh, um, in the students and students can see my emotions and we can together um, show this we can together no, comment on this and uh, make it part of the game of education the game of uh, teaching something um, we cannot realize greetings at the beginning here in, in the virtual classroom as we can do it um, in real classroom. We cannot comment on the secondary actions about something which happens um, inside or around the classroom and we, which can be object of comments uh, by teachers or also by students. We cannot see movements in the room, so we cannot comment on movements in the room. Um, we cannot uh, dispose persons in a certain way, like here in, in this classroom, as we can do it um, in real classrooms. So if we can uh, sit in a certain way, we can change the order of seating, which we can dispose persons in, in the room. Um, we can hardly comment here what happens uh, the day before, what happened this morning, which is a, an activity which we normally do in classes. We can, we, you cannot see how, I, we cannot see how we are closed, uh, which clothes we wear. We cannot really see gestures or many things like this. So I think um, in, and this is more, a little bit my concern about digital uh, communication, it's not, as I, as I told you at the beginning, it's not so much that there is a, a lot of aggression, a hate speech and things like this, but um, maybe we are losing a little bit the use uh, in digital communication, the, the, lose or the use of tie signs. So tie signs are hardly a part of uh, digital communication. And that that's why digital communication is kind of a, a colder, um, less intensive way of communication, which, for instance, makes it difficult to realize what I showed you at the beginning um, about the erotic aspects of knowledge, um, about this uh, game of education, which uh, Rekakati talks about. Um, I wonder if this is still uh, possible in digital communication in digital education so this this is so um, this is what i i just skip this what i would like uh, at uh, in the last uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes of this lesson i would like to reflect on uh, upon together with you um so the question is you see, I am I am quite old, and I am used to to, to uh, traditional ways of teaching, and not so much to digital uh, communication for teaching. And I, I I wonder about a lot of things about this. So, but um, I also appreciate um, lessons online, lessons like this, because it give, gives us the opportunity 
to speak together, even if we are very, very far away from each other. Uh, there are many opportunities and many advantages about, about of this kind of, of um, communication. But I wonder if it can be, if there is some strategies to make uh, the situation better, to create something um, like that, what uh, Rekakati or what I described with you at to you at the beginning with the words of Rekalkati. Is it possible to um, to use also to, to, to replace, to substitute tie signs in digital communication and to create a closer, a better contact between speakers and between the, the group of students and the teachers? So this is uh, the questions I want to give to you at the, at, uh, the end of, uh, for the end of our lessons. I would like you to together in breakout rooms with three participants, we already have pre prepared that, and uh, try together to give some answers to these questions. So um, this is, these are the, the questions. Which kind of tie signs can we use in digital communication in general and in online lessons in particular? How can we enhance and enrich communication on the relational level in digital settings? What can teachers do in order to improve interaction online? What can students do in order to improve interaction online? Do you think it is possible to re realize digital lessons as, these are the words of Rika Kati, as adventures, encounters, deep intellectual and emotional experiences? So I would like you to gather now for 10 minutes in these breakout rooms um, with three persons. I, I would uh, invite one of you to keep track of what you are saying. So to write some proposals or some ideas you can find and some of the group to uh, communicate it afterwards to the others. Um, I get, I think some of your uh, descriptions, some of your ideas were just um, descriptions of the problem we have to solve. At uh, for, for instance, um, um, Beatrix said, uh, "Internet, uh, the internet connection might limit." Uh, some kind of context and and this is exactly the problem so we have we have just the internet connection and we we are limited by this um in the creation of a personal relationships um it is true that we have to 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 do something to uh, to uh, to improve that um and create confidentiality or um show as valentina said show that we are liking each other we are somehow close to each other no? it, it is exactly uh, this what i uh, wanted to 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 reach um and um, the question is how can we do that so it, it is i think uh, maybe we agree upon this um, everybody um in in your um, in your contributions, I I saw that we, maybe we we very much agree upon what's the problem, um, what's the solution? Um, I, maybe it is really difficult to find some the use of emojis of emoticons. Um, okay, that might be a, a possibility to replace tie signs uh, to repute to. Uh, represent tie signs in an, another way um using chat groups using more chat groups are is certainly a good possibility um but it's a good possibility in, in particular for creating uh, ties for um, engaging in more in communication between students, be between the participants of online courses, not so much between the teachers and the, the students. Um, so I creating a good atmosphere is very important. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, the question is how so um, it depends very much also on how how familiar we are with these instruments uh, uh, digital instruments and um, how um, how we can uh, how we are, how able we are to to use them and to uh, adequate them to our to our situation in general i think it is uh, I, I i always had the the idea that we agree that uh, um, something which is real normal and which is very important in our uh, analogous in our traditional communication um, is not present and it, maybe it is not uh, possible to realize this in in digital communication because um, the medium uh, somehow is always the message and the medium the gives us a lot of limitations so we have to with real i think we ha really have to look for new strategies and new ideas how to improve that because at the end uh, digital communication is a, a great opportunity it is uh, to connect to other persons um, but it's also it has also the risk that uh, this connection remains at a rather um, superficial level and uh, it cannot be um, a full relationship like uh, the relationships in uh, in, uh, in the normal worlds are okay so i i try to 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 comment on this and uh, uh, do you have any questions or comments uh, at at the end Luisa made me a question before. If, if you want me to answer now, so but but can you briefly reformulate the question because students did not hear it. Yeah, I know, uh, but it opens a discussion. Maybe it's too big, but we could continue it in the forum actually. Um, that uh, one point you were uh, highlighting is that um, politeness has to do with the ability to understand what the other person expect from you and and to give. No, the person that um and it you framed it as something like quite normal that we do it in all our relationship usually so it's what you usually expect and that's i think it's uh, kind of true but um um there are um relationships in which there is a hierarchy which can be in a partner relationship yeah yesterday was uh, I was watching a, a movie in Italy which is very popular at the moment because it discusses the patriarchy patriar patriarch um, culture so um, now you see in this relationship which are not uh, characterized by politeness but also in, in positive and not toxic relationship I mean we are not maybe always so polite with our partner as we are with others uh, but also in in school no? or or in and teacher a student where there is hierarchy or a boss and and uh, and the others no there is not always politeness unfortunately I, I, uh, thank and, you very much for this yeah, sorry. Oh, oh, oh sorry you're finished no yeah, yeah. Th thank you very much for this question because it gives me gives me the opportunity to, to make it clear what i wanted to to say so what you are saying now is uh, very much related to this idea of uh, politeness is a the realization of some manners of some rules how to how to engage with other persons my idea of politeness is a, a slightly different so i would say if there is a hierarchic relationship between persons um obviously communication and tie signs are different um, than in a non hierarchical not in a relationship between um, persons on the same hierarchical level okay um, for me, communication is polite when it uh, its message is uh, something about what I think our relationship is and what I think, what you think the relationship is. If this relationship is hierarchical um, and I communicate with, let's say, with students as a very high ranked uh, person, something like this, and if they accept it, if for them it's okay i would i would say it is polite because politeness means it is appropriate to the context and to the constellation of the relationship between the persons so violent so, communication would be no, violent no obviously violent will not 
not um, not be included in this because why nobody will accept to to be treated in a violent way. So it, it is. Hmm? I, I see it. I saw it in my life very often in many situations that people are accept to be treated in violent ways because you feel yet you cannot do anything and you got used to it. Hmm. I'm okay, not speaking so, just about uh, physical violence, no, but uh, other, uh, verbal violence. Verbal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, we should, uh, at this point, we have to talk about the concept of verbal violence, but I, I guess we don't have the time to do that here. Klaus, thank you, thank you very much. It was a very, very intriguing. I think we have also very much material to, to think and to develop um, ideas also no, in relation to the digital, but in general. Uh, you you highlighted the importance of 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 this word, yeah, polite and and courtesy, and its origin and no, its development too. So thank you very much for being here with you. Um, thank I you, thank just... you everybody for uh, for your polite attention, <laughs> and, and I hope to hear and see you again somewhere somehow maybe in reality. Yeah, so, let's see. <laughs> that would be great in the future to make a Redico conference on site. Um, then uh, you're invited to discuss in the forum uh, about the question I put in, in, in now in the conversation, for example, but many other questions you maybe got today. Um, but also in the in the local campus are waiting for you two very um, interesting uh, presentations which have been um, <laughs> done in the uh, past conferences, Radico conferences. So you see here Nicholas Potter with viral hate and digital propaganda for right populism online and Alina Jugendheimer, constructions of threat to the folk, so kind of uh, people, but a specific use of, of the word. Um, in right-wing online discourses. So they are both in English and you're invited to discuss also on them uh, online. Um, here it how it looks uh, like on the Gloka campus. So uh, below there is the forum, click there and uh, share your thoughts. So we wait for you next week with someone from Limerick, that is Maria Reeder, Anita Bermettler and Martha Gerald, the use of virtual exchange in digital and intercultural competence education. So we take again the topic that Klaus brought in and also last uh, last week with Savio um, and before with Mileni and we continue uh, in that direction. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, have a nice day and a nice weekend. Take care. <laughs>